Hello. This week we're going to talk about binary data, binomial data. This is data that um, where the response variable it can, it can take one of two values, um, alive or dead, present or absent, or, or, the, or that something happened or didn't happen, like a heart attack, a patient had a heart attack or did not have a heart attack. That's one of the data sets you'll look in the practical session. Um, whether something's present or absent, I said that's that's um, species. It could be uh, the presence or absence of a species in a particular location, and that leads to um, if we can make models that predict that um, presence or absence. It's um, called habitat um, habitat modeling of species. Um, another variable is gender, male or female. So some species have particularly interesting sex determination. Um, temperature dependent sex determination. So one could make uh, a study of how the proportion of males or females um, in a clutch um, or a population depends on the temperature of the environment that the that the eggs were in, for example. So it's those types of question. Okay. Um, well, we seem to be somewhat obsessed by insects and how they die. So let's continue with that. Um, the example I'm going to work through with you is uh, for um, the effects of pesticide um, on insect death. And there's three different pesticides in this study um, they're called product A, product B and product C. And the experiment, this is an experimental study, the experiment involved varying the concentration of that product, uh, of each of the products, and looking to see how many insects died. So you can imagine there were some insects were exposed to very little of, um, of the insecticide and watch to see whether they died or not and some insects were exposed to a lot of the product, the insecticide, and look to see whether they died or not. Importantly each individual insect was in its own, in its own, in its own small vial or container. So each insect is actually an independent data point. It wasn't that there was a bunch of insects in a box, like 10 insects in a box, and they were all exposed to a particular concentration of a particular insecticide, and look to see how many died there, because that would mean that those individuals are not independent. So in this study, the, the individuals were actually in separate containers. All individuals had their own little box that they were in, and they were exposed independently to the insecticide. <clears throat> and then the, the, the researcher recorded how many died, um, or whether each individual died, actually, whether each individual insect died. And the question is, well, what's the effect of insecticide on, on the, the death? And also, does that uh, differ between product? Um, it could be that one product is kind of across all doses, all concentrations, it's, it's got a higher mortality. So we could have a, a higher curve, if you like, a higher relationship between dose and mortality for, for one um, insecticide than another. So another one could be down here, uh, and another one could be down here. That would be differences in the height. Another possibility is that, um, that there's different slopes for those relationships uh, between dose and mortality among the different products. It could be that that one of the products, let's say product A, has a particularly strong dose um, effect. So at low doses it might have very low, low uh, small effects on mortality, it might have low mortality, and at high doses it might have very high mortality. Whereas another insecticide um, might have um, a very flat relationship between uh, dose and and mortality, so there's very very little effect of dose on on mortality. If we see that kind of relationship or that pattern, where some products have very little um, a dose effect, and some products have a very strong dose effect, that means that there um, is an interaction between dose and product i.e. the effect of dose on mortality depends on product. Um, and that's something that we'll look for as well in this data set. So, th so those are the questions that we're trying to ask with this data set. Um, so it's not the simplest of 
of examples of doing binomial a binomial response variable model. Um, it's more it's more like the ANCOVA that you've already done, where one looks for differences between the slopes of the relationships. So it's kind of like a bit of an ANCOVA binomial regression type analysis. Um, so let's get started. Um, let's go go to R, open the data set, and have a look at it. The preliminaries, of course. Open a script, just make this look a bit bigger. First line, rm list equals ls. I apologize if you can hear some noise in the background. There's some roadworks going on outside. And then some libraries we need. As usual, the tidyverse. And I think we'll do one called Boot as well. Um, this might be useful. You'll see why in a bit. Now import the data set. The data set is conveniently placed on my desktop at the moment. You have it in the usual place, the switch drive folder. New pesticide study.csv. That's it. I'll open it. Got this rather dummy first variable, it's just the number of the row, and R is putting a, a automatically calling it x1 because it doesn't actually have a name in the data set. But here are the other variables product, that goes A through C, A, B, and C, log dose, so it's already logged for us, <clears throat> and N is the number of trials, so that was the number of individual insects that were exposed to product A and log dose minus 0.5, that's 9, and this is the number that died, so none of them died, uh, none of those 9 died, whereas if we go down to of higher doses of product A, here, here 10 of the 11 died. Well anyway, I've started to describe the data before I've actually imported it, so let's, um, let's get it in. Copy Pop that here, run it. We didn't do, we didn't run this stuff here. Perfect. So we got an error here. Could not find function read underscore CSV. That is because it's in the library read R, and that was um, loaded into R when we did library tidy tidyverse, which I hadn't previously done. Okie dokie, so that, um, that works. Let's have a look at the data set. We can do that here. So it's saying it's got 65 rows and five variables. The first variable is that dummy one, the row names, that R is given the name X1. You can see it says warning message here. X1 uh, is filled in for a missing column name. Product, that is a character, CHR type variable. And it's given the first 10 rows here. Log dose, the next variable, is a DBL, that's short for double, which uh, in programming terms is kind of a, a numeric, it's a number with um, fractions, there's the cat again. Um, N is an integer, whole numbers, as I said before, it's the number of insects in the trial, and then we've got dead, the number that died. So it's there we go, that's the data set. All right, so that, the, the first thing to, to think about now, before we get onto any of the kind of look, even looking at the data, is just think about um, a few different ways to express the result of, of the experiment of each of these trials. We've ex got it here expressed as the number of trials and the number that died. If you like, this is like the number of times that the uh, that we tossed a coin nine times, and none of those times did it come up tails. Um, there are other ways that we can express this um, data. We're going to just create some of those, put add those to the data set. So we use mutate the data data set here, 
As always, that goes at the start of these dplyr functions, mutators of dplyr function. And let's say, um, let's, let's express it now as number of successes and number of failures. So success, successes, actually that just equals dead, because it's an insecticide, death equals success. And failure of an insecticide, failures, here, have a think about what this is, how we can get this out of the two columns that we've already got. Well, it's the number of trials minus the number that died. So n minus dead. That is the number that lived, i.e. the number of failures. Because this is an insecticide, an insect that lives is a failure of the insecticide. Let's just have a quick look at that. Okay, so we've got, let's scroll down a little bit here, we've got three successes and 14 failures out of a total of 14 trials. Of course it has to be 14 trials. So now there's redundancy among these variables. That's fine because we're not going to use all of them at the same time. These are just different ways of expressing the same data. There's another way of expressing it. Let's do that. Mutate again, dd. This time we're going to do uh, create a new variable that's proportion of success. And that will be, of course, the number of successes divided by n number of trials. Look at the data set. Now we've got a proportion here, proportion successes. Good. Um, <clears throat> there is another way to express this data, and that's just to have each row representing an individual insect. And we would have then a variable. We'd then need a variable that was called um, outcome, for example, that was zero for um, a failure, i.e. living, and one for a death. Okie dokie. But we're not going to do that. It's, li it's a little tricky to create that type of um, format of the data from this type of format. And we don't need to anyway, because uh, it works equally well. What we're going to do, it works equally well for for this type of data with proportion success. In fact, this is a little bit easier to visualize um, the data. Uh, so we'll just continue as we are. Now, of course, the first thing to do is to visualize the data to see what we think the answer to the question is. Um, so, of course, we use ggplot, the data set, the aesthetic mapping on the x-axis will have log dose on the y-axis Proportion success, let's use proportion success and plus geome point. I'll have a scatter plot. I'll run that. Here we go, that's pretty much what I expected. Um, but we can't see the different products on here, so we need to add in an aesthetic mapping, which will be, let's color the points by product and run that. Okie dokie, here we go. Let's just make the points a little bit bigger. We do that, we can do that with size equals, let's try three. Good, oops, to press zoom. Okay, okay. Uh, so, <coughs> uh, so uh, insecticides work pretty much as expected. The more insecticide, this is low dose, and over here is high dose, the higher the dose, the higher the concentration of the insecticide, the greater the proportion of success, where success for an insecticide is death. So higher concentrations, higher death. And actually, you can see that at, at the highest concentrations up here, we're getting... Um, 100% death. Now we have to assume that there's probably a red, that there is a red point and a green point underneath here, underneath this blue one, and also here, and also here, 
uh, and we're missing a red point here. We really need to check that that was um, a, that's a problem with the plotting, not a problem problem with the data. Um, I'm not totally sure. Uh, I think it's a problem with the plotting, and if we jittered these points a bit, we'd see those those appear, and the same down here. So generally speaking, when we make scatter plots, we have to be a bit careful that we um, that we don't lose data points like that. Okay, so now we will um, look to see if there's any evidence, if we think there's any evidence that the the slopes, if you like, of the of the effects of, of insecticides, the different products are different. Now, I, I know the answer, so I can't do this without, <laughs> without um, my brain affecting what I, uh, what I know is the answer. So I'm not going to say what, what I know, uh, or I can't even say what I guess because it's affected by what I know. Um, you should think like, do any of the products look like they have a different kind of slope? And that might be indicated, for example, if one or more of the products looks like it has particularly high mortality at low dose and lower mortality at high dose compared to the others. So do you think that there's differences in, in the slope for the, for the different products? And if so, which? Make a guess about that. Make a I guess about which you think there might be differences. If any at all, there might not be any. Okay, so we've visualised the data. The next thing to do is, um, let's do it wrong actually. Let's follow um, Steffi's example, Dr. Muff's example in, in the lecture and uh, in the previous lecture and do it do it wrong. And that, that means that Let's fit a linear model, just a straightforward linear model to this data. Let's call it M1, LM, and we're going to do proportion success is the response variable. Let's spell that correctly. Is the response variable log dose. It's one of the explanatory variables, that's the continuous explanatory variable, and um, its product, the data is DD. Now before we go on, let's just do this degrees of freedom thing. How many degrees of freedom for error do you think there's going to be? Um, so you need to work out how many parameters are going to be fitted by this model. Um, ooh, let's just correct this, put the times in there, so they can be different slopes for the three lines um, that we're fitting. And um, have a think about um, how many parameters we're going to need to fit here. Uh, we've got three lines, each line needs an intercept and a, and a, and a slope, uh, so that's six, six parameters. So that's 63 data points minus um, six parameters, assuming there are no missing values in here. Um, we'll have 57 degrees of freedom for error. 57 df for error. We're going to check that um, when we've done the model. Okay, let's run that. And uh, we didn't do gg fortify to get auto plot. gg fortify. We need that for the auto plot function. For the model diagnostics. Let's run that. I'm waiting for it to appear. There we go. Look at this. This this pattern in the residuals, very, very clear. Actually, the blue line underemphasizes the, the pattern here. Um, uh, this would suggest that that is actually kind of like a um, up and down and up, uh, sorry, down and up pattern in there. Uh, the normal QQ plot isn't too bad. Scale locations not suggesting there's a big problem um, with increasing variance or decreasing variance with the fitted values, and not too much problem with the leverage. The main thing is is this here, this problem. Uh, we can see if we look at the graph of the fitted lines on the data, we can see where that's coming from. Let's close that. 
And right now we'll do a plot, what well, we'll add to this graph that we previously made. We'll add to that the regression lines. And that will be geome smooth method equals lm. Okay, here we go. So here in this, let's, let's zoom this in. In this area here, the residuals are negative. So the, the, the data points that we've observed are below the fitted line, so that's a negative residual. And up here, the residuals are positive, so it kind of goes negative, about the same, and then positive. If we just skip back, so it goes negative, positive. If we just skip back to the diagnostic plots, we can see the residuals go negative, then positive. So that um, is in agreement with the problem that we've seen in the residuals. The other thing that's clear, well, just about, yes, it's clear here, is, well, here's zero, here's um, zero mortality, zero percent mortality, and here's a hundred percent mortality, and our model can predict greater than 100% mortality, which is obviously impossible. And it can predict less than 0% mortality, which is also impossible. Uh, so the model is, we can see, is not a good model for representing this data for a couple of reasons, a couple of fundamental reasons. It doesn't, it doesn't um, fit the relationship very well, and also it can predict impossible values. If we really Made a, mis made a mistake, didn't look at the model diagnostics. You might make the summary and look at the coefficients. And here there's little evidence of these coefficients, which are the difference with, of the slope between product B and the intercept, um, sorry, and the, and the slope of product A. There's little evidence that they are significantly different from zero. And that means that the slopes seem to be more or less the same or well, there's not so much sorry there's not evidence that they're different we do an ANOVA on that and for the interaction term of the ANOVA <coughs> the F statistic is here and the p-value is uh, 0.25 so not a statistically significant difference between the slopes okay so that's doing it doing it wrong after um, a break I'm going to show you um, how we do it right.